Assalamu alaikum. Welcome again. In today's video, we'll be going through the blood supply of different parts of the brain. As for the blood supply of the brain, we will start by mentioning the arterial supply. The arterial supply consists mainly of anterior and posterior systems. Let's start with the posterior system, also known as vertebrobasilar system. From the subclavian arteries on both sides, they give rise to right and left vertebral arteries. These arteries will ascend through passing in the transverse foramina of the cervical vertebra. The arteries on both sides will enter the skull through the foramen magnum. Before both arteries unite, they will give rise to right and left branches located on the anterior side of the medulla. These branches will converge to form anterior spinal artery, which will descend and run in the anterior median fissure of the spinal cord. Also, from left and right vertebral arteries, the posterior spinal arteries will travel along the dorsal part of the spinal cord and they will travel as two separate arteries. They arise either from the right and left vertebral arteries as we mentioned, or they may arise from the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, which we will be discussing next. After both vertebral arteries enter through the foramen magnum, each vertebral artery will give one branch at the lower level of the medulla on both sides, which is posterior inferior cerebellar artery. This artery supplies lateral side of the medulla as well as lower level of the cerebellum and inferior cerebellar peduncle. Then, they will converge at the level of pontomedullary junction to form basilar artery. The basilar artery will give two branches, one on each side, which is anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Anterior inferior cerebellar artery will supply the bones, lateral cerebellar surface, and middle cerebellar peduncle. Then, the basilar artery will give short branches to supply the bones. These are known as pontine branches. The basilar artery will then give rise to superior cerebellar artery below the third cranial nerve. The superior cerebellar artery will supply the midbrain, upper side of the cerebellum, and superior cerebellar peduncle. Lastly, the terminal branches of the basilar artery are posterior cerebral arteries. They arise above the level of the third cranial nerve, and the posterior cerebral artery will supply part of the midbrain, part of the thalamus, and the occipital lobe. So if the posterior cerebral artery is occluded, the patient will have many problems, among them which is related to the occipital lobe, Contralateral homonymous hemianopsia with macular sparing. So if the patient has right posterior cerebral artery occlusion, he or she will lose the left field of vision on both right and left eyes with the macula or the center spared. Now let's go to the anterior circulation responsible of supplying the brain. Starting from internal carotid artery, it will enter the skull and start giving off branches. First, we have ophthalmic artery, which will give rise to central retinal artery to supply the eyes. Then we have anterior choroidal artery, and this will supply choroid plexus in the lateral ventricle and many other areas of the cerebrum. Then we have hypophysial arteries, which will form mainly the arterial network around the pituitary gland. Then the internal carotid artery will bifurcate to give rise to anterior and middle cerebral arteries. The middle cerebral artery will go laterally through the lateral sulcus and supply mainly the lateral hemispheres, except the superior one inch of the parietal and frontal lobes. These two areas are supplied by the anterior cerebral arteries. The middle cerebral artery also supplies parts of internal capsule, posterior limb and the geno, in which corticospinal and corticobulbar tracts are passing. So. If middle cerebral artery got occluded, the patient will have many problems, most importantly, contralateral hemiplegia or hemiparesis of the face and upper limbs, contralateral loss of sensation of the face and the upper limbs. He or she will also have aphasia. If the dominant hemisphere is affected, usually the left one, and due to the presence of Broca's and Wernicke's areas. On the other hand, if the non-dominant hemisphere is affected, the patient will have hemineglect syndrome. Now let's discuss the anterior cerebral artery. 
it goes anteriorly and supplies the medial aspect of each hemisphere. The medial aspect of the cerebral hemisphere is responsible for lower extremities. Anterior cerebral artery also supplies area of the brain responsible of olfactory bulb and tract. So can you expect the complications if anterior cerebral artery is occluded? You're right. The patient will have contralateral loss of sensation as well as motor supply of the lower limbs. And also the patient will have insomnia which is loss of smell sensation. Now let's try to form a circuit between these arteries and between anterior and posterior systems. So we have anterior communicating artery which connects right and left anterior cerebral arteries. One thing to keep in mind is that anterior communicating artery has the highest chance of developing aneurysm in circle of willies. Now to complete the circle of willies, the posterior communicating arteries on both sides will connect internal carotid artery with posterior cerebral artery, forming a complete circle called again circle of willies. Lastly, to conclude our video, we will mention briefly the venous drainage of the brain. So we have meningeal veins in the dura mater responsible of drainage. These veins will eventually drain into one or more of the valveless sinuses, which are superior sagittal sinus, then we have inferior sagittal sinus, and both superior sagittal and inferior sagittal sinuses are present in fact cerebri. The inferior sagittal sinus will meet with the great cerebral vein to form the straight sinus. Then we have the transverse sinus. The right transverse sinus will receive blood from the superior sagittal sinus, while the left transverse sinus will receive blood from the straight sinus. Then the right and left transverse sinuses will continue as right and left sigmoid sinuses. These two sinuses will descend through the jugular foramina to be known as internal jugular vein. Then we have the petrosal sinuses, superior and inferior, and lastly, the cavernous sinus. And this is it for the blood supply. Hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe our video to get our new videos and explanations. Till the next time.